Gary, if I can bring you in, Studio Entertainment, $3.84 billion. It was estimated at $4.39 billion, a miss on the media networks as well. Uh, what, what's your initial reaction? I'm, I'm surprised. Well, the big initial reaction is Disney's usually good with guidance. This is yeah. not just a big miss. It's a gargantuan miss uh, compared to what, what the norm is. I'm surprised it's not down more than 5%. But Disney has some big things going on going forward. The Star Wars lands are open. I, and I got to tell you, the parks here are packed. Uh, the wait lines are three hours. Believe me, I, I've tried with my uh, <laughs> goddaughters. Uh, but look, I think there's some issues on the media front. I think we have a gargantuan bubble in media. Uh, on how many people are involved in different companies and different streaming. Yeah. And, you know, they're now going up against Netflix. I have to look at the innards and the numbers, okay. but look, on the whole, not good. Yeah, let me give you some of those details. So they say in the quarter, operating results at 21st Century Fox Business reflected a loss from the distribution driven by performance of the Dark Phoenix. Um, charges totaling $207 million primarily for severance in connection with the integration of 21st Century uh, Fox Parks experiences and products revenues for the quarters increased by 7% to 6.6 billion. James, let me ask you, I mean the parks, that's where all the strength is. We just did a Disney adventure. The entertainment was amazing, <laughs> but the prices, my God, it's like, you know, they're selling you filet mignon prices and they're, they're, the food is, you know, a little bit like day old bread. The hotel rooms, not really what you're paying for there. I think they've got a big margin. From an investor point of view, it's fantastic. Um, but you look for a, a lot of that strength in the parks and experiences. What do you think, James? Yeah, I was glad my kids never asked me to go there. The uh, the price is... Uh, what did you tell them it burned down? How did they never ask you to go there? How did you manage that? I guess, uh, I guess looking at these results, it's also... Uh, Seems that our, our proprietor did not make a bad deal. We'll we'll say that. I uh, I also think uh, it's in terms of the guidance. I don't know if it's a media bubble, but uh, mm. the um, I think if I was a Disney investor, I would be asking a lot of questions about how much are you spending on the new streaming and how much are you going to be paying per episode to create new television programs. How much are you spending to create movies? I think that's. Uh, uh, something that uh, investors do want to keep an eye on, given that uh, you mentioned this is a very, very crowded market now in streaming video. Cynthia, we should mention, though, of course, we have the big Star Wars uh, event again, what, towards the end of this year with the release of a, another movie. It has been a blockbuster season up to now for Disney, um, better than last year. All of this content must spell good news for Disney+, Plus, their new streaming service that we've been talking about, which I believe starts at six ninety nine a month, right? It, it does. It, Disney Plus is certainly going to be stocked with very highly branded, high marquee value content. But I think one of the things that's going to be a real challenge for Disney is that as they build Disney Plus, not only are they going to have to invest in a ton of very high end content, but they are, they're shifting their business models so much that they're going to have to forego licensing revenue that they would previously have had because now they're going to show these movies on Disney Plus. So they, they don't have a lot of wiggle room for misses like this. I think this is going to be a pretty big one that will reverberate okay. for a while at a time when the company has to do a lot of investing. Let, right. let me give you a couple more data points. Media Network's revenues for the quarter increased 21%. That's a big number, to $6.7 billion. Cable Network revenue for the quarter in, increased 24% to 4.1, uh, sorry, 4.5 billion. Cynthia, let me take up the other side of that because even though they'll be streaming the movies on their website, that's just a fraction of where all the revenue comes from. I know because I'm forced to buy so much Avenger garbage, I can't even believe it. I mean, all we're ever doing is buying more toys and shoes and blah. I mean, Star Wars, I'm, I'm, my entire paycheck goes towards things that are not the actual movie. So I don't think they're, the, Maybe they're giving up the stream from, from selling that movie to other services, but it's still, they have all these products all over the place. And, you know, you bring them to Disney Plus to watch the content. The move with 21st Century Fox just gives them more content to put in that streaming channel. It may be a bumpy ride to get over to the new model, but in the end, I don't know, it's, it's a, it feels like a powerhouse. Where am I wrong? There, there's absolutely no question that they have 
the, the number of brands that they now have under the umbrella is truly impressive. But I will say that it, if you talk to Disney folks, there hasn't been a real consumer products driver since Frozen. Frozen was an engine that, that just dr drove for a couple of years, and so that makes for some very tough comparisons. You know, we're seeing these big gains in revenue for the media division because that reflects the coming together of Disney and Fox. I think these numbers are going to be a little lumpy until we lap the acquisition in another couple of quarters. James, I, or Gary, I, I think back to, um, you know, when they bought the Star Wars franchise. And I remember mm. being on the air when that announcement was made. And everyone just fell over dead at how giant that number was. And sort of, you know, who's going to get interested in that again. And look at how that has paid dividends. Right now, well, as you look at Disney and you worry about maybe what's going on with the integration, could it be another moment like that? Well, well the one thing they're magnificent at, at is leveraging uh, the names and the brands. They've done it magnificently throughout the years, and I suspect they're going to continue going forward. And who knows what else they're going to pick up going forward. Uh, but for me, as a market guy, when I see a company like Disney miss revenues for the quarter by, like, I'm reading $1.2 billion, that's a lot. And that means everybody on Wall Street's got to lower their numbers going forward. So I think for the next quarter, we're going to see a, a, a pretty weak stock. Uh, and we'll see what Disney has to say on the guidance and, and what's to come. But again, they have some big movies coming out. They got the Star Wars lands coming out. There'll be more Star Wars down the road. So I think they'll, they'll do fine. But right now, I think you got a little bit of an issue uh, in the next couple of quarters. All right.